I will present work from my postdoc, but also from other members from my group. So we are working with Dotistroma needle blight, which is a disease of pines. It's caused by two different fungi from the Ascomycete, from the genus Dotistroma. Those two fungi, they are in morphology and ecological behavior. They are very similar, so in the field you cannot distinguish them. Even with a microscope, they look so similar that they are basically identical. But on the genome level, they are quite distinct. Dotistroma primarily affects pine species, and it causes a, a needle blight, as illustrated here on this picture. It infects the needle, they turn necrotic, and the, finally will fall off the tree. And um, the infection with this pathogen reduces the photosynthetic capacity of the pines, and they, in consequence, they will show reduced growth. And if the infestation is very extensive, then also regeneration may fail or trees can die premature. There, in the past years, there were several mass outbreaks in pine plantations in different parts of the world. And it, there is some evidence that this more frequent and more severe disease outbreaks were actually promoted by climate change through warmer and wetter climate in spring. <laughs> so this trauma needle blight is distributed globally. It's very abundant here in Europe, but also like North America and South America. And then it also occurs like in some parts of Asia, Africa, Australia, and in New Zealand. As most of you probably know, pines are only native to the northern hemisphere. So all the pines present in the southern hemisphere, as well as the pathogen, they are introduced species in the southern hemisphere. Yeah. For today, I will focus on North America and also just on Dotistroma septosporum, where we have most data and are most progressed with the analysis. Dotistroma septosporum occurs in a wide range of habitats along the Pacific coast in the US and Canada. It's mostly found on lodgepole pine and also the related jack pine, but it also occurs occasionally on other pine hosts, so it's not very host specific. The other species, Dotistroma pinei, occurs in a different area and mostly in the center of the US, where it's found on Austrian pine, Pinus nigra, which actually is an introduced pine species from Europe and it's not native in this area. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so to cause actually a successful infection, so this trauma needs to be like virulent. Then we also need like a susceptible pine host in a conductive environment. And my research group actually is interested to understand better how do changes like a different pine host or a different dotistroma in a different environment or a slightly different environment actually affect the interaction of the two and finally the uh, disease outcome. And we have a few research questions we are following. And the first question is basically, is there any genetic structure in the pathogen population of Dotistroma septosporum here in the Pacific Northwest? And then like the follow-up question is, do we find evidence for local adaptation in this population? And to find answer to those questions, we established a collection of more than 200 Dotistroma isolates from this Pacific Northwest region. And we uh, did full genome sequencing on them to get some SNP markers and are currently analyzing the data. But we are also looking at the interaction of Dotistroma with its pine host. And we are especially interested to see if different pine species show different res uh, re resistance reactions at the pathogen 
but, and we're also looking if different pine provenances within a species show differences in resistance against the pathogen. And then, like, finally, it would be nice if we somehow can understand how, like, a change in the environment or um, effect how the host and the pathogen interact with each other. Here's some first results from the genome sequencing. This uh, analysis in, or illustrated here includes 219 isolates and uh, roughly 150,000 genome-wide SNP markers. And if you look at this neighbor joining tree here, you can see that there are different groups showing up in this tree. And to make it a bit easier, I use these colors to indicate different genotype groups. I use the same colors on this map to illustrate where those corresponding genetic groups are actually occurring. And there are some groups, like for example, this orange group, which is um, locally confined, they just occur in a, in a restricted area. Same apply for this green or the red group or this dark purple group down here. Other genetic groups, they have a more white third geographic distribution like this blue group or the black group. We haven't yet looked on the demographic history of this pathogen population and also not yet had the time to look if there's evidence for local adaptation. But this will be for sure very interesting to see what we feel find there. Then another discovery, a bit surprising, maybe, was that in Vancouver, so in the very urban area of Vancouver, we actually find also Dotistroma, but it's a European strain, which is on the genetically completely unrelated to the North American strains. And it will be now interesting to see if this strain actually remains in the city or if it starts to spread into the forested areas and if it will be interbreeding with the local strains and if it has some kind of advantage compared to the local strains or not. So we will see what's happening. Then one of our PhD students, she was phenotyping those different pathogen populations for growth on malt extract agar at three different temperatures that were 15, 20, and 25 degrees. And here are some results. Maybe the one finding is that generally Dotistroma grows better at 20 degrees than 15 and 25 degrees. But if we zoom in a bit, there are some groups which generally grow well, like this blue population here and other groups like this green one, which generally tend to be slower growing. Then one kind of surprising finding was this European genotype from Vancouver, which was the only genotype performing equally well at 25 degrees than at 20 degrees. So we do not know currently if this will give some advantage to this strain or not, and we're also investigating in some follow-up experiments if this is a general feature of European strains that they grow better at higher temperature or if it's just really this one genotype here in Vancouver. Now I will switch from like the pathogen side to the tree side. And like the tree breeders, they were really interested to know are there resistant pine trees out in the field? So that was, I think, more than 10 years ago. They really went to the field searching for tree in infested areas which didn't show disease symptoms, and they were successful. And in the natural population, there are like really trees which differ in their susceptibility to totistroma. And this is now exploited in tree breeding. What was also nice when we then conducted inoculation experiments in the lab and inoculated like tiny seedlings with dotistroma that we could reproduce the observations in the field and that really the resistant families were less infected with dotistroma than the susceptible families. 
And based on this, we decided to perform a large growth chamber experiment to really screen different pine species and provenances for their resistance against Dotistroma needle blight. We had like a lodgepole pine and then the closely related jack pine plus hybrid species. And in total, we screened 40 different provenances from British Columbia and Alberta. And they were inoculated with two isolates from Dotistroma septosperm. This experiment was a huge team effort as finally we had 4,000 seedlings to assess for their disease resistance. Here's some results. On this map, it's like the look geographic origin of all those screened provenances indicated, and then the colors stand for the different pine species, and the, the larger a circle is, the, high, uh, the more susceptible a, a provenance was to Dotistroma. And one result was that the jack pine actually is more susceptible to Dotistroma than the hybrids and the lodgepole pine. And this result has is of some concern as jack pine has a huge distribution in Canada. So it basically goes from Alberta all the way to the East Coast. And I think right now Dotistroma isn't really widespread in those jack pine forests, but if it will establish there, there's a huge potential to create mass outbreaks. Then the other result we found that targets only lodgepole pine, but here we observed that basically provenances from a more northern location were more, more resistant to Dotistroma needle blight than provenances from the south. We are not entirely sure why this is so, if it's just because the pines from the north show some adaptation to this more northern climate, which also helps with resistance to Dotistroma needle blight, or if it's like an artifact from the strains we selected for the inoculation experiment, which both were more from the northern part of the British Columbia. So we did a follow-up experiment where we had like a north provenance of lodgepole pine and a southern provenance and inoculated them specifically with an isolate from the north and the south. And here again, we get the same result. So the provenance from the north was more resistant to both strains of Dotistroma than the provenance from the south. Mm -hmm. So it looks like that to some extent, the the resistant pine doesn't care too much about by which Dotistroma strain she is inoculated, but it still doesn't really answer why those northern pines are more resistant to Dotistroma. It could be that, or we know that in this northern area, Dotistroma is present for sure for at least 200 years, so if the pines somehow co-evolve with the pathogen and are therefore more resistant, or if it's just like a side effect of the adaptation of the pine to this more northern climate. I'd like to end my presentation with this slide here. Here again, like this disease triangle, but this time I just would like to illustrate that there's a lot of variation on the pathogen side, the pine side, and also of environments. And I hope that we can continue our research and then finally we'll find some answers on how like the different types of environment and genotypes of Dotistroma and the pines shape like the disease outcome and if we can make some predictions and also like gain insight somehow when we are doing um, this um, assisted migration of pine provenances from southern locations to more northern locations. That's all, and I thank you for your attention.